In this video, I'm going to teach you an extremely valuable SEO methodology. The whole point here is so that you can rank your website higher, so you can beat your competition, so that you can make more money online. And the methodology I'm going to teach you is called keyword crystallization. Now, before I keep going, it's important to say, I believe that those who put in hard work, I believe you can do this concept, right? It's going to be complicated. This video, as it goes on, gets more complicated, but it gets more valuable. But I believe, I truly believe those who put in hard work can do this and it makes a big difference. But before we get into that, I want to be very clear. There are people per month passively that make five, 10, $15,000 off of the concepts I'm going to show you in this video. They build websites, informational websites, affiliate websites, and they just rake in cash because they've built an asset online, right? The whole purpose of this video is to teach you a concept, to give you knowledge so that you can push it to your website today. You can start doing the hard work today. And that brings me to one other point before we get into keyword crystallization. There's three ingredients to be successful online. Number one, it's hard work. Nothing replaces it. Number two is patience, which is something that I could work on too a lot. I need more patience. And number three is knowledge. If you skip around this video, you just zoom through it, you're going to miss the foundational blocks that I'm going to set into place. As the video goes on, the video will get more sophisticated. The value will increase, but it's contingent upon you listening to the first parts of this. So let's jump into keyword crystallization and how it can help your website rank faster. So foundational block number one, there are three types of websites. There are shotgun websites, there are lollipop websites, and there are crystal websites. Many clients come to our firm and they have shotgun websites. And how can you tell what a shotgun website is? It's fairly simple. So what does a shotgun website look like? So here we have the globe, right? We can go anywhere and talk about anything. But let's say we went down to Florida. Let's say there's a website on Florida and it talks about all the cool things you can do. You can go to Disney World. You can go to the Florida Keys. You can do all kinds of things. Let's go down to Miami. Let's go to Boca Raton. Like you can do anything in Florida, right? That is a shotgun website. Fun things to do in Florida. It has a little bit of scope, a little bit of precision, but not much. You could talk about anything under the sun, right? A lot of websites are shotgun websites and that's a very basic website. It's not going to help us too much. So let's move on to the second iteration that I see, which are lollipop websites, which have a little bit more sophistication, but it needs to go a step further. So let's use Photoshop to visualize what the heck a lollipop website looks like. So every lollipop is a different topic on your website, but there's an issue here. Okay. They all tie back into your central idea, right? Right here. That is what your website is about. And in the case that we talked about earlier, that was Florida. Fun things to do in Florida. Well, if you get a little bit more sophisticated, if instead of doing a shotgun approach, you start to do the lollipop approach is where each of these are different hubs. So for instance, we could go to chat GPT and say, um, give me a list of some cities in Florida. And it gives you a list and you start to say fun things to do in Jacksonville. Well, that's great. And let's say this lollipop up here is Jacksonville. It's a little larger than the rest because there's a lot of things, a lot of fun things to do in Jacksonville, but there's an issue. The issue is every lollipop is kind of a universe unto itself, right? They don't connect in any which way. And this is what I see a lot. If you want to get more sophisticated to get more rankings, you need to take it a step further, right? Lollipops, we just keep building hubs. That's cool. Maybe this hub is a little smaller, but what can we do to make it better? So the next part's super important. I'm going to give you a visual for the crystallization method, what a crystal website looks like. But before we do this, I want to make sure that you understand that a hub is merely this. It's topics, articles, anything that is closely related that has a confinement on it. In other words, Jacksonville, Florida, Jacksonville, right? The fun things to do in Jacksonville. If you only can talk about Jacksonville, that's a confinement, right? That's a hub. Everything pertains to that confinement. You can only talk about Jacksonville. Now you're going to see why that matters. So this here, you think it's a snowflake, a crystal, but it's not. This is a picture of a website and it's a beautiful website. And I'll show you why. As we scroll in, boom, that is the homepage. Everything is centered around the homepage, right? This could be the about us page, the contact us, terms, privacy policy, our services, and what have you. But as we scroll out and we get further and further out, everything around here, as you can see, is no longer just a lollipop. It has branches because crystals have branches and they connect. They connect in unique ways. Out here, let's say this branch is the fun things to do or the best 
things to do. Let's just stick with fun. The fun things to do in Florida. Okay, great. Fun things to do in Florida. This one here is Orlando in particular. The fun things to do in Florida. Orlando, Florida. And this one here is the fun things to do in Orlando, Florida for families. Look, we just crystallized. You just witnessed the first crystallization. So fun things to do. Fun things to do in Orlando. Fun things to do in Orlando, Florida for families. Do you see how it's connected? Do you see how it's connected? Now, here's where it gets tricky. Here's the best restaurants in Florida, right? The best restaurants in Orlando, Florida. And then it goes like this. The best restaurants in Orlando, Florida for families. All of a sudden, we've crystallized concepts. Things are connected. The website no longer is a lollipop website, right? Do you see how this works? Best things in Florida, best fishing places in Florida, best fishing places in Orlando, Florida, best fishing places in Orlando, Florida for families. And somehow we are connecting the two hubs. Now we're going to talk about two new concepts, gap content as well as bridging content. This matters. If you want to create a crystal website, which you should, you need to understand these concepts. But before we do, I want you to understand when I said the funnest, which funnest isn't a word, right? Funnest things to do in Florida. Maybe it would be more apt to say the best things to do in Florida. Under that would be the, the best things to do in Orlando, Florida. And then under that, the best things to do in Orlando, Florida for families. Each of these, it's like a nest, like you know how those Russian nesting dolls, they, they all fit within each other. That is how you're supposed to organize a website. This is your tier one. This is your tier two. This is your tier three. And the tricky part is people think like, you're done. I can just talk about the best things I do in Florida and talk about Orlando. I can talk about Miami. I can just talk about the places. And then I'll talk about, you know, the same thing in these, these the, for families. But when you get more sophisticated, what you're going to do, you're going to say the best uh, fishing locations maybe not the best um, example, locations in uh, Florida. And then you're going to say the best fishing locations in Florida, in Orlando, Florida. Then you're going to say the best fishing locations in Orlando, Florida for families. And guess what? This one here is potentially your bridge to this hub here. And these are all articles you write in a very specific way. If you want to get further and further on the structure, I have a masterclass that goes over this, right? But I want to give you a general idea of what you need to be doing. You need to map out what you're going to write about on your website. Here's the rub. A lot of people nowadays, especially, are obsessed with ChatGPT, Ahrefs, SEMrush, and we forgot that we have awesome computers in our head. You need to take a step back. Put yourself in the shoes of the consumer. They're coming to Florida, man, and you need to help them. Maybe they are single. Maybe they're on a romantic vacation. Maybe they're on a honeymoon. Maybe it's anniversary. Maybe they're bringing the family. Maybe they're going to, to Disney World. Whatever. Cater to them and figure out how that catering with each topic, those branch, those crystallization branches, they relate to each other. That is, that is bridging content. When you have bridging content, it can still rank, but it bridges purposely between your hubs. Do not have a lollipop hub. Have a crystal website. So in this next portion, it's going to be over the shoulder look. This is what I do in the masterclass. I lay it out, foundational blocks, I explain it, and then I show you in practice what it looks like. So let's jump into it. All right, so here we go. Let's not forget the crystal, right? Homepage, we're going to work on this first branch here. The first branch is going to be the best things to do in Florida, all right? The second branch is going to be the best things to do in Tampa. This is going to be the best things to do in Orlando, and so on and so forth. That's tier one. These are tier two. Do you see how that works? Best things to do in Florida. Very important. Tier one. Everything branches off of this. They connect. Do you see how they connect here? Very important. How do they connect? They connect with internal links, right? If you're interested in the best places to, you know, best things to do in Tampa, you might be interested in, in cool things to do in Florida. Because look, that's a very important point. If you are to go to Tampa, Tampa is close to Orlando. If you have... If you link Tampa to Miami, that's foolish, right? Because people are not interested. I bet you if we come up here, let's type in Tampa. I've done a little preliminary and I was sorting through this, but it goes to stand. I need to explain this to you. Um, look here, Tampa. 
There's there's a search term. Watch this. Orlando. Tampa to Orlando. That's 10,000 to 100,000 clicks right there. Or, or, or searches, rather. Now, that's probably people looking for uh, directions, this, that, another. But it shows you semantically. Like, look, people in Tampa, they go to Florida. So in here, as we have our crystallization, right? As we do this, this one right here should probably be close to Orlando and then Tampa right here. So we can tie them together, right? We can tie them together. Let's get a new uh, color. We'll tie them together with red because an article can start to do that, right? So nonetheless, under this, the tier threes are the best things to do in Tampa for families, vacation, and honeymoon. And what that looks like is little articles off the side of this branch. And every branch has articles too, right? They're all going to have similar articles. I teach in the master class of blanket methodology for templating because when you start to do this, you can, you can template out the best things to do for families in Tampa, best things to do with families in Orlando, so on and so forth. But here's the trick. Here's the trick. How do we go from here? Let me grab this color. How do we go from here, this hub, to the one next to it? And what would that hub be over here? Well, an easy one to do would be family vacations, right? We take a tier three and we kind of blow it up because family vacations um, is a huge term. Florida family vacations. So that will be our tier one right here. Florida family vacations. People want to know about vacations specifically. It's a little different than best things to do in Florida. It's very, it can be similar. We're going to talk about similar things, maybe the same or, uh, you know, Disney and stuff like that, but maybe a bit different too. But when we do this, Florida family vacations, we're able to come over here and say, okay, if each of these tier two articles are going to have these little red dots, these little articles on families, vacation, and honeymoon, they're all going to have these same things, right? Well, because of that, what we're able to do is say, well, this here can connect to this here, right? This here can connect to this here. So family vacation, Florida family vacations, Florida family vacations in Tampa Bay. So these tier threes could connect out to the tier twos right there. These right here. Florida family vacations in Tampa, I'll highlight it, could connect to this one. Best things to do in Tampa for families. They have a little bit of different intent, right? Maybe it's vacation, maybe it's not. Those are two different things. Maybe people are living in Tampa. They want to they see about what's fun for my family to do. But you can certainly tie it with this one here. And all of a sudden, we've connected the two. So how would we go a little bit further and figure out data-driven decisions? How do we back this up, right? So what I would do, I'd grab this. The best things to do in Tampa for Florida. I'd come down here. I'd push it into Google. And I want to see who comes up. TripAdvisor, Aaron's Travel Tips. I haven't seen those. Okay, this is the one. Right. All right. So this here, this website, I don't think has a huge domain authority. Let's see. Um, I have it right here. So this is... Uh, Ahrefs, their domain rating is 11. And with this specific URL, they have 1.2 thousand traffic. That's really good. They've done a good job. And the organics, the organic keywords that they uh, rank for on this one particular topic, things to do in Tampa, things to do with kids, Tampa, all of these, this is what you want to do. They've done such a good job with this. Let's look at their header structure that they've been able to pull in probably two, 3,000 uh, visitors a month. Look, they talk about 29 different things. And in the process of talking about these 29 different things, watch, right? Let's say that this is the 29 different things right there. Congratulations. Of these, right? Let's pretend this was our website. We know that we could take any one of these, any one of these, and tie it back to our other hub over here. They relate in some fashion. Some of these would get chopped out. We're not talking about those, but we'll talk about these. These all pertain to uh, Florida family vacations, right? You can stay here at this place. They connect. That's the point. Find the connections. If you can do that, your website will not only be evergreen, but it'll be hard for your competitors to come over and topple you. Now, because we found this website, it really intrigued me, right? Because we know the DR is 11, and yet this is the total website. Look, they created this in March of 2022, and their traffic is exploded. Uh, 10,000, I wouldn't be surprised, 20, 30,000, this website. 
right here. And there's the one that we just looked at. This is a fairly simple thing. Erin here. Welcome to Erin's Travel Tips. What is she doing right? How did she rank uh, this Tampa Bay one so well? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to her top pages. And I'm curious, are there any other Tampa um, articles that she has? Let's just find out. And look here. She has kid things to do in Tampa Bay. She has things to do in Tampa for couples. St. Petersburg versus Tampa for vacation. Best Tampa Bay Christmas lights. Tampa versus Florida. She's doing exactly what we talked about here. She's becoming the topical relevance. She's becoming an authority about Tampa. She's talking about Tampa versus Orlando. She understands that they're topically relevant. They're close in proximity. People care. The search volume is there. Um, I'd be curious. Let's go a step further. Let's click in this article. Let's see how she interlinks. The 30 plus fun date things to do in Tampa. Let's just look for blue text. Let's just look for blue text. Let's see if she's interlinking right there. Okay. Do you see how she's doing this Tampa versus Orlando, which is best for you? It's hard to unwind a website structure, right? It's hard to, especially the way that I do it. I do it purposely. So it's hard for you to unwind it, um, for a competitor to unwind it. I do what are called invisible hubs and invisible hub has to do with this. Watch. If you look at um, her website here, I'll put this down a bit. Do you see the URL? If you click on this, this right here is the slug. The slug is not aaronstraveltips.com slash Tampa Bay. If she did that, right, Tampa Bay slash kids things to do in Tampa Bay, that would allow me to easily just find out exactly how she's linking everything and emulate her, right? Parasitic SEO. We go over this. She does invisible hubs. A lot of people do this. Maybe they don't know what they're doing, but look at her internal internal links, right? Where is this going to? Best beaches near Tampa, Florida. All right. These things matter. You have to figure out how to crystallize your website. She understands that she has to have topical authority to rank. Very nice website, by the way. I'd like to see a sticky sidebar here. I think that's a lost opportunity. Um, but look, everything. Awesome. Uh, internal links throughout. Very nice. She's pointing out to government websites here. Very, very nice. So once you see it in practice like this, you start to be able to say, okay, this, you know, it looks complicated. You need to figure out uh, how it all connects. So that's the point. When we come to Photoshop once more, let's take this layer off. Where I start is, check this out. I start with these. Let's do a different color. Just switch it up a bit. This is a nice color. I start with these. The tier one. I want to know exactly what I'm going to talk about in this website. And then I backwards engineer it and I figure out what are the branches. And then furthermore, how do the branches connect to the next one over? It's that simple. Start doing this with your websites. If you already have a website, you can do the site map, get all the words together. You can use a tool like this. Um, this is Screaming Frog. I was doing a scroll on a website, uh, the Travel Lemon. They have a lot of pages, a lot, a lot of pages. But you can come up here and I could say, I want to know everything about Tampa. And it will pull every piece of content, even media, on Tampa. Uh, Tampa neighborhoods, uh, Tampa where to stay in Tampa, parks in Tampa, best time to visit Tampa, Tampa restaurants, day trips. They cover, they blanket the topic, right? But figure out what you're going to write about on these tier ones first. Figure out the semantic relationships, whether or not it's proximity figure out the connections between the two and link them together. You do not want a lollipop website. You certainly don't want a shotgun website. That is not successful. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, like it, check out the master class. We're doing a lot of things here. We have a tool, right? A content tool. If you haven't seen that, it's pretty gnarly. Um, and then we are building out the master class. Uh, it's getting better and better. It's based upon what I call the Maverick method. It's very defined methodology. You can follow along, very easy to follow. And then you can do a over the shoulder view of me working like this, hours and hours of content. So anyways, hope you like it and I'll catch you on the next one.